All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you some books that I recommend that you can use to help you with Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and even Calculus 3. These are books that I have personally used to help me do well in those courses, and so I thought I would share with you what those books are. Now, some of these are just textbooks that I used for those classes, but as you can see with the two on top, these are some supplemental books that you can get to help you in addition to your textbook. All right, and so let's get started. Let's look at the first book here. So first up, we have a textbook, and by the way, all the books that I talk about in this video will be linked in the description below if you want to check them out. All right, but this is a textbook for Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. It is the specific textbook that I used personally when I was taking those classes as a student. So when I first learned Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, this is the textbook that I used. It's also the textbook that I use to help me structure and write my lesson and examples videos here on this channel. Now, obviously there's a lot of my own input in those videos, but this textbook helped to guide me in structuring those videos and make sure that I hit all the major points for each concept. All right, so this textbook really isn't all that special, but it is a textbook that I have used a lot. And so I do personally recommend this if you're looking for a good Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbook. This covers both of those classes. All right, and you will notice that this is an AP edition. So if you are looking to take an AP Calculus exam, this book will be helpful for you as well. All right, but let's take a look inside. I'm gonna move it to the side here. Let's open it up and look at the table of contents. By the way, this is the ninth edition. There's a lot of different editions of textbooks usually. I'm using the ninth edition, although if you get the 10th or the 11th, I'm not sure how many they have now. They're gonna be pretty much the same, but there will probably be some revisions, some small changes, and maybe some new example problems or new exercises that you can do. But for the most part, the content remains the same because math doesn't really change. It's pretty much gonna be the same thing forever. All right, but in this book, you can see that there is a chapter P, which is a preparation for calculus chapter. Essentially, it's just a good review of some pre-calculus calculus topics that you should know before you get into calculus. But then after that, you get into the meat of calculus. You have limits and then derivatives. And then the next chapter is the application of derivatives. And then you have integration. And then you look at derivatives and integrals of some other functions that you originally didn't look at, which is logarithmic functions, exponential functions, and some other transcendental functions. And then chapter six is on differential equations, which is pretty important if you're taking an AP calculus exam. Otherwise, it's not so important for a first time calculus learner. Usually you'll come back to differential equations in a later course, in particular, a course called differential equations. All right, but then you get to chapter seven, which is on the applications of integration. This is typically where calculus two begins and calculus one ends. At least that's where Calculus 2 began for me when I took that course, and it's also where I start my own Calculus 2 series. Then after that, you have Chapter 8 on Integration Techniques and L'Hopital's Rule. Then Chapter 9 is all about Infinite Series. Chapter 10 is where you get into Parametric Equations and Polar Coordinates. And then Chapter 11 kind of goes into Calculus 3, Vectors and Geometry of Space is usually the first unit that you cover in a Calculus 3 course. So you get a little bit of a bonus chapter here of something that you probably won't see in Calculus 2. So if you want a little preview into Calculus 3, this textbook has that for you as well. If you want the rest of the topics in Calculus 3, you're gonna want the textbook that I will show you later in this video. Okay, but with all of those chapters in this textbook, all of the major concepts and topics in Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 are covered. All right, and so you could take a look through this textbook and see all the different lessons. You can see the different exercises. Let's see if I can find an exercises page. Here we go. This is for section 2-2, and there's plenty of different examples for you to solve. Unfortunately, not all of them are solved for you. There are answers in the back of the book for most of these problems, but it's only for the odd numbered problems. So if you want help with the even numbered problems, you're out of luck. Sometimes you can find the solutions online, but generally if you're just looking to do some self-practicing, doing the odd numbered problems is going to be your best bet. All right, so you can page through the rest of this book and see all the different sections, all the different problems, but that's pretty much all there is to know about this Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbook. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna close this book up and we will move on to our next book. So this next book is a little bit weird. You're probably gonna look at this and probably start laughing. I know I did at first when I saw this book. There's a lot of these books where there's some topic 
usually it's not even math, and it says for dummies, and it seems a little condescending, like you're dumb, you need this book, but it's really not like that. This is a book that I got as a supplement to my Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbook. I think it's important to have some other books as well to help you understand some concepts that maybe the textbook isn't entirely clear on. Right? A lot of textbooks, as you probably know, don't really write in plain language. They usually make a lot of assumptions and assume that you know what they're doing when they do different steps. And so they can be a little bit annoying in that way, which is where I think that you need to get some supplemental resources. And so that can be tutorial videos on YouTube, which maybe you've watched some of mine, but that can also be through more books. And so this is one of those books that I personally used to kind of fill in between the lines of my textbook. And so yes, this book is not very formal. It's a very informal book. So if you take a look inside here, some of the chapter names are pretty weird. Like I believe chapter six is called the trig tango. It's all about refreshing your memory on what the trig functions are and how to use them. These first two parts of the book are pretty good at introducing you to calculus and helping you to remember some of those important skills from algebra that you're going to need to succeed in calculus. But then after the first two parts, you get into the actual calculus with limits, differentiation, and integration, as well as infinite series. It kind of cuts off there. This book doesn't have anything about polar coordinates or parametric equations. It just covers kind of the big topics that are covered in Calculus 1 and some of the topics that you might see on the AP Calculus exam. All right, and then this last chapter doesn't really have to do too much with actually learning new concepts in calculus. It's sort of there to help you make less mistakes. You'll see there's 10 things to remember, 10 things to forget, and 10 things you can't get away with. It's a lot of good tips for different algebra skills that you need to remember, as well as some new calculus skills that you need to keep in mind as well. All right, so this book is pretty good at helping you avoid the common mistakes that many calculus students will make as long as you read through the book, of course. All right, but if we look through the actual book, well, that's not very helpful, but here we go. You can kind of see how it's written. It's not like your usual textbook. It's written a little bit more plainly, like how you and I actually talk to each other when we have a conversation. It's not written in a formal textbook lingo. It's pretty easy to read overall and makes a lot of the more challenging concepts in calculus a little bit more approachable than maybe they would be if you were only reading a textbook. Again, I wanna stress this, this should not be your only book that you use to learn calculus. You should really use it as a supplement to your textbook to really kind of fill in the details that maybe the textbook isn't so good at explaining for you. All right, let me go to an actual calculus section here though. This seems to be working with some of the applications of differentiation. Let's go a little further here. That looks like we're working with area under the curve. Here we have the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we can keep going. There's a second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. This book really does a good job at covering all the major bases for calculus one and calculus two, and shows a lot of the steps that you wanna see when it goes through example problems. For example, you can see with this integral right here that it's showing a lot of steps. Many of these steps a textbook might actually exclude because it's assuming you already know how to do some of these things. That's what really irks me about a lot of textbooks is they do make a lot of assumptions about the reader, but this book is very good at counteracting that if you're someone that has a hard time understanding textbooks when they do things like that, when they skip certain steps in a proof or in an example problem. Okay, but that's it for this second book. Overall, it's not the best book for learning calculus, but I have found it to be extremely helpful for some of the more difficult concepts in calculus that maybe a traditional textbook isn't as good at explaining for a brand new student. All right, so this is one of the books that I recommend that you get as a supplement to your Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbook. But now let's look at the next book. Now this next book I have here is called Essential Calculus Skills Practice Workbook with Full Solutions. That's a big deal. We'll talk about that more in just a second. But this is also another good supplemental book that I think you should have in addition to a textbook. Because what this book does is it really focuses in on the actual skills of calculus. It's not so much focused on telling you why we need to do certain things or the applications of certain things. It's just purely based on the skills. Can you solve a limit? Can you take a derivative? Can you integrate this integral? Do you know how to use u substitution? That kind of stuff, right? It tells you how to do those things and then you practice doing them. That's really all this book is about. 
and I think there's a hidden beauty in that type of book. Obviously, this shouldn't be the only thing that you use to learn calculus, but it's very good at helping you become a master at many of the calculus concepts that you will learn. And so if we take a look throughout this book here, let's just look at the table of contents to start. You can see everything that is included in this book. We have derivatives of polynomials, the chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, derivatives of trig functions, derivatives of exponentials, derivatives of logarithms, second derivatives, extreme values, limits and L'Hopital's rule, integrals of polynomials, definite integrals, integrals of trig functions, integrals of exponentials and logarithms, integration by polynomial substitution, integration by trigonometric substitution. I think polynomial substitution just means U substitution, uh, but then you have integration by parts. And then this last chapter is a little bit weird, multiple integrals. That's actually something that you usually learn in Calculus 3. So in a way, this book is also a little bit of a supplement for a Calculus 3 course. You can do a little practice with some multiple integrals. I find that interesting that that's included in this book in what is otherwise a primarily Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 book. In fact, I'd probably say it's primarily Calculus 1. There's really not a ton of Calculus 2 in here other than integration by parts and L'Hopital's rule. All right, but if you look through this book, it's pretty simple in how it's laid out. It's also, just like the previous book, written in plain English. It's telling you how to do things in a way that makes sense to your average Joe. It's not trying to explain things at a, a really high level, like you're trying to write a thesis to get your master's degree or something, right? It's written in a way that most people can understand. In fact, I would argue if you even know anything about algebra, if you've taken an algebra course, you could probably learn how to do a lot of calculus from this book, never having seen anything calculus before. I think it does a pretty good job at showing you the rules for differentiation, showing you the rules for integration, giving you some good examples, and then the best part, giving you some exercises to do yourself. And this book is printed with a type of paper that you can easily write on. It doesn't have your typical textbook feel. It does feel like paper, and so it's really easy to write in. And so in a way, it encourages you to write in the textbook, which I would also encourage if you get this book. It basically is a workbook, and so you don't need any extra paper. You can just do the problems right here in the book. And I believe these are double-sided, so there's like more difficult problems on the back side. But then you get right into the next chapter. You learn about the chain rule, quotient rule, get some examples, and then you try it out yourself with these exercise worksheets. It's really cool. And the best part, as you saw on the cover of this book, is that the full solutions for all of these problems, every single problem you see, is in the back of this book. In fact, it's like a majority of the back of the book after, let's see if I get far enough here. The back of this book is just filled with all of these solutions. And these are really detailed solutions too. It's not just what the final answer is, it's how do you get to that final answer and all of the steps to get there. It's actually really great, I love this. I think if you're really struggling with derivatives or integrals and you're just, you know, you're not good at the algebra, you can't quite get to the final answer because you're making some kind of algebra mistake and you don't know what it is, all of the steps are here and they're explained pretty clearly. And so I really do highly recommend this book if you're looking to just practice your calculus skills, no matter what level you are at. If you're just beginning calculus, or if you're reviewing calculus, or if you've even taken calculus before, this can just be a fun little workbook to maybe freshen up on your skills. I think one of the best uses of this book would maybe be during the summer, if you're on a little bit of a hiatus from school, and so you took Calculus 1, but you're getting ready to take Calculus 2, this can be a good book to help you prepare for Calculus 2 by just refreshing you on some Calculus 1 skills. And there's a good variety of problems in here to help you do that. All right, but that's this book. On the back, by the way, are all of the derivative and integral rules that you might need to know, as well as some properties of exponents and logs that are pretty important for calculus as well. And then you have your trig identities, which is also a big part of calculus. You really should know all of these trig identities. Okay, but that's this book, Essential Calculus Skills Practice Workbook with Full Solutions. In case I didn't say it earlier, it is written by Chris McCullen, who has a PhD. Uh, but that's it for this book, and so let's look at our final book for this video. All right, so last but not least, we have another textbook, but this textbook is not for Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. This textbook is for Calculus 3. 
This is a textbook that I personally used, or I was personally required to use when I first learned Calculus 3, and it's also going to be the textbook that I use to help me structure my own Calculus 3 series when I make those videos. And so this is really a continuation of the Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbook that I showed you earlier. It's written by the same people, it's published by the same company. The only difference is I believe this is the 10th edition, while the other book I showed you was the 9th edition. It doesn't really matter, but these are the editions that I personally used and will continue to use. So if we open up this book, let's take a look at the first couple pages here. We can look at the table of contents just like we did with the other textbook. The first chapter is Vectors and the Geometry of Space. Just like I said when we looked at the other textbook, this is the first chapter of Calculus 3 that for some reason is also included in the other textbook for Calc 1 and Calc 2. Kind of interesting that they include it in both books. I really don't know what the reason is. But then after that, you get into the meat of Calculus 3, which is pretty exciting. You have vector valued functions, functions of several variables. That is where things get really interesting and personally really fun. I love calculus three, probably my favorite class that I took. And then you have multiple integration, which as I mentioned earlier, when we looked at that previous book, the workbook, there's a whole section on multiple integrals. Very weird that that's included in that book because as you see, that's chapter 14, a couple chapters into calculus three. So I don't know why it's in there. I guess they're not all that difficult, at least in the beginning. So I guess it makes sense to put those in that book. It does work a lot on helping you get better at integration, I suppose. There's a lot of opportunity to work on your integration skills with multiple integrals. So I guess it makes sense. But then after that, we have vector analysis. And then there's some additional topics in differential equations. I think most Calculus 3 courses don't get to this chapter. And when I cover Calculus 3, I probably won't cover that as well. It's kind of an extra chapter that's there if you're interested in differential equations. All right, but once again, this is a textbook. So if you look through it, it's just like any other textbook. It's not written in plain English. It is written in a way that you kind of have to read between the lines. There's sometimes a lot of steps that are skipped. And so if you're not familiar with Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, if you're not really fluent in integration and differentiation, sometimes some of the steps they skip could be confusing. But overall, this is a pretty good Calculus 3 textbook. It hits all of the major concepts and provides you with plenty of examples. As you can see, there's a lot of exercises here for you to work through. But just like with the other textbook for Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, this textbook only has the answers for the odd numbered problems in the back of the book. And it's just the answers, it's not the solution. Although you can get the solutions if you go to calcchat.com. In fact, that's right here, you can see it, calcchat.com. It's kind of a nice website you can go to where you can actually find the problem solutions or the full solutions for the odd numbered problems. It's just that when you get to that website, you will have to choose the textbook you're using because CalcChat covers a lot of different textbooks. So just keep that in mind if you actually wanna see how to solve a lot of these problems. I think being able to see the full solutions can be pretty helpful uh, for studying and if you're just learning Calculus 3 on your own in your spare time. And by the way, the CalcChat website is also applicable to the Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbook. You can look up full solutions for all of those odd numbered problems in that book as well on that website. All right, but this is the Calculus 3 textbook that I recommend. It's the book that I use and it's the book that I will continue to use going forward. And so with that, that is all the books that I wanted to show you. These are all the books that I recommend for Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. Of course, I'm sure there are some more supplemental books that might be helpful for Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, as well as Calculus 3. But these two supplemental books, I believe, will be particularly helpful for some of those early calculus courses. Usually once you get into Calculus 3, you got some pretty good calculus skills, and so you maybe don't need some supplemental material as much as you needed before. All right, but at the end of the day, everybody's different. Everybody learns in a different way. I thought I would just share with you some books that I believe are helpful for learning Calculus 1, 2, and 3. Okay, and one more time, if you want to get any of these books, I have links for them in the description of this video that you can check out. But with that, that's all I had for this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.